In this video, I'll teach you all about the depth of field and motion blur. Hello everybody, welcome to HM Studio. So, if you want to learn something, you should learn the basics first. And that's what we're going to do for a few minutes. And then I'll show you how to do it practically in 3ds Max and Corona. The whole thing will apply in V-Ray and basically every other render engines out there. So don't worry if you're not using the Corona renderer. So, what is motion blur? When you're trying to shoot a moving object, it might come out blurry in your photo. And that's because that object is not static during the time that your camera shutter is open to take that picture. And its movement gets recorded as a blur. There are two factors affecting this phenomenon. The speed of the moving object and the shutter speed of your camera. When you push the shutter button on any camera, that causes the shutter of the camera to release and let the light reach the sensor. And that way you can capture a photo. The longer the camera iris is open, the more movement will be captured and thus we're getting a stronger motion blur effect. On the other hand, we'll get a brighter image because of all the extra light that's being captured by the sensor. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Now, what is depth of field? It simply refers to the area that is in focus. The area from the nearest object in focus to the furthest one. Three things affect the depth of field. The aperture size, distance from the object, and the focal length of your lens. Aperture refers to the opening of a lens diaphragm through which light passes. It is calibrated in F numbers or F stops and it's generally written as numbers such as 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4 and so on. The lower the F number is means the camera's diaphragm will open larger and that will cause a shallower depth of field. Now the focal length. As you go higher with the focal length, uh, you will get a shallower depth of field. And as you go lower, uh, you will get a wider one. So the depth of field will be way stronger on a 100 mm lens than a 60 mm one. And now the last one, which is the distance. As you get closer to this object, you'll get a shallower depth of field and vice versa. Pretty simple. Now let's see how we can do this stuff in 3ds Max. And we're going to start with the motion blur. As you can see, I have an animated car, a corona camera with all of its default settings. I have only changed the focal length to 85. So if I start rendering the scene as it is, uh, you can see we don't have any motion blur happening in the scene, despite the fact that the car is moving, right? In order to get that effect, you should enable the motion blur in your camera settings right here. Since the camera isn't moving for now, I only need to enable the geometry option and just like that, we get the motion blur in the scene. To change the strength of this effect, we can simply change the shutter speed. Now it's 50, which is the default value, but if I decrease it down to 10, you can see that we would have a much stronger motion blur in the render. Now if I increase it up to 100, we would have just a subtle motion blur in the scene. Now let's say the camera is following the car at the same speed. For that I'm going to link the camera to the car with the select and link like this. Now if I scrub the timeline, you'll see that the camera is moving alongside the car. So it's only fair to say that the car can be considered as static in this shot, therefore it shouldn't be blurry in the render, but it still is. And the reason is that we haven't enabled the camera option here. Now the camera is moving, this option should be enabled. Now you can see the car looks completely sharp and everything else in the scene has a motion blur. And that's because, figuratively speaking, everything is moving except the car, right? Now if I decrease this down to 50 again, I can get a stronger motion blur and you can actually see some of that happening on the wheels of the car, since they're actually spinning and that movement is not in the same direction that the camera is moving. So that's how you can get some motion blur in your renders. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how to do it in V-Ray camera and also physical camera so you could do it with other render engines as well. Now let's see how we can get some depth of field in our renders. In order to get that effect, first of all, you should enable it from here then you should make sure that the target of your camera is exactly on your focal point, which in this case is this side of the car. Or you can simply adjust the distance from here. All right, let's talk about the distance. 
But before that, uh, I would reduce the f-stop down to 1 so we could see the result more clearly. As I said before, as you're getting farther away from the subject, the less depth of field you'll have. Take a closer look at this tree and see how much blurrier it gets as I'm moving the camera towards the car. Can you see the difference? We have a shallower depth of field due to the closer distance to the subject and that's how distance affects that. The next one is F number. So the lower you go with the F number means you have a larger aperture and that causes a shallower depth of field. I guess the fastest lens available right now has a 0.8 f-stop, but here we can cheat a bit and go as low as we want. Now if I increase this number up to 8, we'll get a wider depth of field, just like that. Last but not least is the focal length. Now let's say we have a 85 mm lens with the f-stop of 1 with 12 meters of distance and this will be the amount of depth of field in the scene. Now if I decrease the focal length down to 16 and move the camera as close as 2 meters to the car, you'll see that we're still getting a wider depth of field. Although the camera is way closer to the car and you already learned how distance affects that, so in this case, if you want to get a shallower depth of field, you just need to increase the F number and that's how you can find a balance between all of these numbers to get what you want. Now let's move the camera way farther away from the car and use a 200mm lens. Although the camera is way too far, but we get a ton of blurriness in the foreground and also the background. And to get a wider depth of field here, you can simply increase the F number. As simple as that. Now let's see how we can do all of this stuff with V-Ray camera and physical camera. By the way, if you're still not subscribed to the channel, this is the perfect time to hit that subscribe button. Alright, in the V-Ray physical camera, you can enable depth of field and motion blur from here. And you need to make sure that you're using the exposure value option under the color and exposure rollout. This way you can have a fixed exposure value and this way changing the shutter speed and F number and other stuff wouldn't affect your image's exposure. So it wouldn't get in brighter or darker by changing those numbers. All the rest will be exactly the same as Corona camera. Also in the physical camera, you should use a static AV value for the same reason, right? Uh, you don't want these numbers to affect your exposure. You can also enable the depth of field and motion blur from here and all the rest will be the same. Now you can leave a like on this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching the whole thing, guys. Bye-bye.